Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Gabe. This is Games with Gabe. If you've been following this YouTube series, then you know in the last video we came up with a simple method to do a game loop and start drawing to the screen and it looks something like this. And your screen should be completely black. Mine is just like this because of different resolutions. Um, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be implementing a key listener. And so this will be in charge of handling the user's input and telling us whenever the user, and, and we can pull it and just ask if the user has pressed certain keys or not. And so then we can use this to control the different players and all that stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to start off with is we're going to create a class for this. We'll call this KL for key listener. Um, the reason we can't call it key listener is because as you'll see, we are actually implementing a Java library called key listener. And so we would have a naming issue there. We will import this from Java ot and event dot key event. Nope. Key listener. Oh, what's it tell me? Event dot key listener. Okay, there we go. And so then we can just use IntelliJ to find out which methods we need to implement. We'll say implement these methods. Okay. And then it tells us there's key typed, key pressed, and key released. So we will hold all of these in a private variable called uh, key pressed. We'll just call it this. And we'll say this is a boolean array of values, and we will leave that empty. And we'll actually we'll, we'll initialize it to be a new boolean array with 128 characters. And that's because this uh, key event that we're going to be pulling from pulls from the ASCII character code, which has 128 characters that we can use. So then we will go into key pressed, and if this uh, function will get called. So this function is inherently part of the window and we'll actually add this to the window. And so every time a user presses a key on this window, it will call this function for us. We don't have to do anything about that. And so then we'll simply say key pressed and then we will say uh, key event dot key code get key code equals true because the user is pressing it. And then if the key is released, we will say key pressed key event dot get key code equals false. And then we'll add a couple more functions for our use where we can determine whether the key is pressed. So we'll just say public uh, boolean is key pressed and then we will take in an int key code and then we will return whether the key pressed is true inside of our array. And so this is nice because then we can just call this function and it will tell us whether and we can pull this from anywhere. Okay, so we'll go back into our window class we will initialize a new key listener class here. So I'll say KL key listener equals new KL. That will initialize us a new key listener. And then we actually have to register this key listener with the window. So this class is our window. This, this class handles all of that stuff since we are extending the J frame. And so we can simply say this dot add key listener and ex expecting a key listener class, which is why we had to implement it. And then we'll say key listener. So this will take care of setting up that key listener for us. And then we can simply call, we can pull it now. So if we go into here, uh, we can say if key listener dot is key pressed. And now where are we going to get these key codes from? Well, we can get these key codes from key event. So if we just say key event dot VK up, that should give us the up arrow. And if this is pressed, whoops, we will say um, the user is pressing the up key or the up arrow. Okay, uh, we have not imported this, so we'll import this real quick. We will say import java dot dot event dot lowercase event dot key event. Okay, <clears throat> now if we run this and we hit the up arrow, we should see in our console down here, and it should say, oh. We have make sure you're clicked on your window too, because if you're not focused on that window, it's not going to notice it. And so it says the user is pressing the up arrow every time we press the up arrow. Uh, we can extend that to really easily. Just say else if key listener dot is key pressed key event dot vk down, and then we'll say system dot out dot print line down. And so really quickly, you can see how this could be used to make your game. 
Okay, and so with all of that out of the way, now we have a really simple way to listen to the user input, and we can use this to uh, build the rest of our game. In the next video, what we're gonna go over is we're gonna go over uh, building our own rectangle class that will contain some useful methods for us so we can determine when collisions are happening and all that stuff. And then we'll also hand off the drawing to each uh, rectangle so that the rectangles can draw themselves. And then once that's done, we can actually implement the player controller and control the paddle. And then we'll implement a simple AI and we will have Pong just about complete. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks. Bye.